Hey y'all, if you've ever found yourself wondering, how does a carburetor work in a car? Well, today we're not going to take a look at that at all. So I can't help you. But we are going to look at roots of negative numbers. So let's take a look at some of these. Now, how do you explain these to somebody who's, let's say you're the teacher. And these, these, this younger kid than you looks and, and goes, what does all this stuff here mean? And your explanation is what? What's this one right here? You'd go, oh. That's the square root of four. There's a two there that you understand. That means what number times itself twice gives you four? The answer is two. This one, you would say what number times itself three times gives you 27? And the answer to that is three. This one, what number times itself four times gives you 16? And the answer is two. And then that's kind of it, okay? This one is kind of weird. Look at this. What, time, what number times itself 94 times gives you one? And of course, the answer is one. You can multiply one by itself 94 times. You're still going to get one. All right. So let's go backwards, right? Let's look at these. You tell me, write the reverse of these. We know that, let's go to the first one here. Negative two times negative two times negative two is negative eight, right? Okay. So that's negative two to the what power? To the third power, right? So in other words, negative two to the third power is the same thing as negative eight, right? Well, you can write the reverse of this. And you can go, okay, the root of negative 8, in other words, the cube root of negative 8, that's what we're looking for. If you were to see that circled problem, you would say, oh, what number times itself three times gives you negative 8? The answer is negative 2. Okay? Remember how an odd number of negative factors gives you a negative answer? Same thing here. So how would you write the second one? You go, okay, cube root of negative 27 is negative 3. So negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 is negative 27 and that's how you write it and that's what you're going to see. For example, what's the cube root of negative 64? Now again, if you look at this and you go, ah, I can't quite figure out what that is, just start trying integers, right? Is the cube root, now first off, you know since the answer is negative 64 that the answer to this will be a negative, right? So the cube root of negative 64 is something times itself three times that gives you negative 64. So you can just go ahead and write negative. You know it's going to be negative. Well, is it 1? Negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1? No. Okay. Same thing. Negative 2? No, no. You keep going and you'll find that it's negative 4. And there you go. You can just keep trying integers until they work. All right? What's the fifth root of negative 32? In other words, in normal language, what number times itself five times gives you negative 32? All right? Well, we know it's a negative, right? It's just an odd number of factors. It'll be a negative number. And, of course, we find that the answer is negative 2. Negative 2 times negative 2, you know, 5 times will give you negative 32. All right. We're going to move on to something else. It's negative exponents. Now, this is interesting. Now, rather than just plop you right into this and just hope you get it, um, let's talk about kind of the, the logic behind it. Okay. Well, first off, you tell me how to write 1 1,000th one as a decimal number. In other words, 1 1,000th one is the same thing as 1 over a thousand is 10 to the third power, right? Right? Just 10 times 10 times 10 is a thousand. So this is the same thing as that. So how would you write that it's a decimal? So one one thousandth, you would just go, you know, one divided by a thousand, that's my one. The decimal's already there, right? You'd just go, whoop, you, you, and then there it is. Point zero zero one. That's how, is a decimal. And in scientific notation, let's take this right here and write this in scientific notation. Now, you know, the trick to do in scientific notation is to take this number and make sure the decimal makes the new number between one and 10, and then, you know, something times 10 to the something power, right? So we know we're gonna have to move this thing over three times right there. That'll give us a one. That's between one and 10, including one, so that's okay. So this is gonna be one times 10 to the what power? Don't say third, right? 10 to the third power is 1,000. So 1 times 1,000 is 1,000. That's not our answer. What we're having is 1 1,000th. So this is going to be moved over to the right, which will make it 1 times 10 to the negative third power. That makes sense? Okay. So now let's, let's look at this whole thing. 1 1,000th as a decimal looks like 0 0.001, which you were, I mean, you know, you, you could read that, right? That's one, the same thing as 1 over 10 to the third power. And it's written like this. Now, this is interesting. Look at that. 1 times 10 to the negative third power is the same thing as 
1 over 10 to the positive third power. Hmm. Let's try, let's try something else, okay? 10 to the negative second power? Well, let's look at that. 10 to the negative 2. Well, let's see. Ten to the, 1 times 10 to the negative 2. Let's just make it, right? Okay. 1 times 10 to the negative 2. It's the same thing, right? Okay. Well, let's go 1 times 10 to the negative 2. The, the decimal is here already. Let's move it over to the negative 2. 1, 2, right there. And that's going to be 0 0.01. Okay? Now, 0 0.01, if you were to put that as a fraction, that would be the same thing as, well, you know, if it's 0 0.01, that's 1 100th, right? Okay? It's 1 100th. Well, we could also write 1 100th as that's going to be the same thing as 1 over 10 to the second power. Now, look at that. 1 times or excuse me, let's go 10 to the negative 2 power is the same thing as 1 over 10 to the positive 2 power. Look at the last screen we had. 1 uh, times, let's, let's just say 10 to the negative 3 power is the same thing as 1 over 10 to the positive 3 power. Have we discovered a pattern here? Yes, we have. Okay. All right. Let's go to 10 to the negative 5. Okay. 10 to the negative fifth, I know it's kind of sloppy looking here, we can just go ahead and say the pattern is it's going to be 1 divided by 10 to the fifth power. And you could actually go ahead and do all this stuff if you wanted to. That's going to be 1, you know, hundred thousandth or whatever. Okay. So that's the rule. Let's go ahead and make this as a rule. A rule for writing, rewriting negative exponents is this. Okay. We'll go, we can say, you know, we'll call it x to the negative n. I know that looks complicated. That's the same thing as 1 over x to the positive n. And there you go. If you want to write that down, I would, if you like that. But just know that it works like this. You know, some something, you know, 5 to, you can make it any number you want. It doesn't have to be 10. 5 to the negative 3 power, let's say. That's the same thing as 1 over, and then take this, and go, that's going to be 5 to the positive 3. And there we go. And that will actually work. Okay. Dollar is to it. We'll go more into the Y and do some stuff with it later on. But let's simplify them. 3 to the negative third power. Well, the rule up here says something to a negative number is the same thing as 1 over this same thing here to the positive number. Well, that means that this is the same thing as 1 over... 3 to the positive third. Don't change the sign of this, just the sign of the exponent. Well, we all know what 3 to the third power is, right? 3 times 3 times 3. There we go. 1 over 27. That's it. Now, just so you'll know, another way. 3 to the, what you can also do is look at this. Now, sometimes we do this in algebra, is we can look at a fraction like this. Any number in the whole world is a fraction if you stick it over 1, right? What we can do is we can say, we can mess with negative exponents. Remember how like in an equation, if you go uh, x plus 5 is equal to 7, and you can say, I'm going to move this over to one side, and it turned this time, it turns into a negative 5. The positive 5, if you move it over, it turns into a negative 5. Something similar happens, of course the x is 2. Something similar happens to this. If you take this fraction, 3 uh, to the negative third over 1, and you can do the exact same thing here and go, well, I'm going to move this to the bottom of this fraction, okay? If you take any number with an exponent, you can move it from top to bottom or bottom to top, whatever you want. If you do that, this base will stay the same sign. Don't mess with that. But the exponent itself will change signs. So you always have something up here. If you move this down here, that's going to be turned into 3 to the positive third power. That's all there is to it. We just proved that that's what it was a minute ago. Okay, we'll try a couple more here. One over four to the negative two power. All right, I'm gonna do this two ways so you can see both ways. This is really interesting. Uh, this is this part is really funky. Okay, so let's go here. Let's just rewrite the thing. One, keep it a one. Now four to the negative two power. That's the same thing as remember our definition, right? This part right here we're gonna rewrite as one over four to the second power, positive, all right? So now you have this divided by that. Well, we know what uh, 1 over 4 squared is. That's 1 16th, right? So now our problem turns into 1 divided by 1 16th. We all know what to do when we divide fractions, right? 
that's the same thing as going one times the reciprocal or 16 over one. And if you want to put that, you can do that. Well, obviously that's 16, right? Got the answer, 16. Okay, now the other way is the way I showed you just the last slide where we like go, you know, flip this and go down here and it changes the value of the uh, exponent. So let's do that just for the heck of it, okay? So we have one divided by four to the negative two. Well, if we move this up here, that turns into four, don't change the base, okay? That turns into four to the positive two power, right? Well, what is four squared? And there we go. At some point, I mean, who knows how many thousands of years ago, somebody noticed this pattern and went, mm, let's just make it a, a method of doing things. So we can, number one, advance the great knowledge and scientific, you know, wonderfulness of humanity, and two, torture teenagers in the year 2000, whatever. Okay, all right. Now this looks complicated, but it is not at all. If you have a method, use the method, right? That's what you do in algebra. You learn a method. You don't let these little parentheses and negative things get to you. You simply follow the method, all right? Now, if you want, we can do it this hard fraction-y way where we do this and, ugh, I mean, I don't know. If you want to, we, we could. Do you want to? Too bad we're not, all right? We're gonna do it the easier way, which means I'm gonna flump this thing up there and change what I need to change. Now, don't forget, when you put this hunk you change, if you change sides of the fraction, denominator to numerator or numerator to denominator, your everything gets left alone except one thing, that right there. Don't mess with anything else, all right? So this turns into, there's nothing down below, just put a one if you want, you don't have to. The only thing that changes in this is the sign of the exponent. So negative two to the fourth power, I'll stop right there. Don't forget what this means, this means Negative two times negative two times negative two times negative two, all in parentheses. All right. So when we have four, which is an even number of negative ex, uh, exponent, or excuse me, negative factors, and so the answer will be positive. Two times two times two times two is sixteen, and there you go. That's all there is to it. Okay. All right. Let's try another one. You try this. Go ahead and pause this. Copy this. You do it yourself. Don't let, don't let me do it. You go ahead and do it yourself. Pause it. Okay, I'm assuming you paused it. If you didn't, naughty deputy. All right, here we go. We're just gonna, you know, we're gonna go from here and go you right up to there. Move it up. I'm keeping everything exactly the same except for that. Okay, negative three to the second power. Well, that, that means negative three times negative three, which is nine. There you go, dollar is two. Okay, all right. Let's uh, try zero exponents. And let's look at this just as a uh, general math thing. You'll see this in the future more. But one is the same thing as four to the second divided by four to the second, right? Any number divided by itself is one, correct? Okay, but let's say we uh, moved this. Well, you know what, hold on a second, I'll show you. Um, if we move this up here and we went, okay, I'm gonna go four to the second power. I'm gonna move it up here. And I'm going to turn this into 4 to the negative second power. Okay, what will happen is when you multiply bases that are the same, remember what we do, right? If we have x to the eighth times x to the you know second, the answer is x to the tenth, right? We just add those. Now this is gone if I move this up here. Will you tell me what is 4 to the second times 4 to the negative 2? You add this and that, right? Well, that makes it four to the zero power, right? We already know the answer is one. And in fact, you can do this with any number you want. Eight to the fifth divided by eight to the fifth, you move the eight to the fifth, or from the bottom up here, and you go eight to the negative fifth. So that gives me eight to the uh, uh, zero, and we already know the answer is one because eight to the fifth divided by eight to the fifth is one. So by definition, something to the zero power is one. You might want to write that down in your notes, okay, or remember it. All right, let's try a couple of these. Two to the zero power, anything to the zero power, by definition, is one, all right? The second one is slightly different, however, because what we're going to do is, remember how we used to do these like this? We'd go, oh, the opposite of five squared. You'd go, okay, well, that part's 25, 
and then I'm going to apply the negative. Oh, the answer is negative 25. You're not saying that negative 5 times negative 5 is, 20, is negative 25, which it isn't. You're saying the opposite of 25 is negative 25. Same thing here. Look at that thing. The opposite of 2 to the 0 power. Well, let's just get 2 to the 0 power first. That's going to be 1, right? And the opposite of that is negative 1. Boom. Now this right here, if it's in parentheses, 1. It's going to be a 1. Anything in there? I mean, I don't care what's in there. You could have this. The answer is 1, okay? You could have, I don't care what it is. You could have, you know, Mickey Mouse in there to the zero power, and the answer is 1. I don't care what's in there. Okay, all right. All right, let's take a look at a couple of these. Um, these are no big deal. These are exactly the same as you've done before. You simply get all the X's together, get all the Y's together, simplify them. Your answer will have an X, a Y, and whatever letter in there, just one example of each instead of all these strung together. So let's take the X first. I got X squared and I got oh, X to the negative two. Well, you can do this arithmetic in your head. That's not that big of a deal. That's gonna be X to the zero power. Okay, here we have Y to the fifth and Y to the negative two. That'll be y to the 5 plus negative 2 there. Now, right here, that means that this is 1. You don't have to, I mean, you, this is gone. You don't even have to write, oh, this is 1 y to the third power. I mean, that's fine. We already know it's a 1. We, there's nothing there, so it's a 1. So this is going to be y cubed right there, and that's it. Just call it y cubed, you're done. This, this can be some of those fast, fun Saxon problems that you go, oh, yeah, good. 20 seconds, I got that done. Next one, there we go. Okay. All right, go to page 331 and pause it and try those practice problems. See how you do, and let's do one of, the, one of these at a time. Okay, so go ahead and pause it. All right, well, uh, this is an interesting set here, but let's take a look at them. The first one will be the cube root of negative 27, that is negative 3. A is negative 3, so pause it and try B. All right, B is a stinker, but don't give up. You know, don't just go, uh, give up, I have too many, blah, blah. Try all the integers. Go through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you know, and so on, all right? What's the cube root of negative three? Well, already you know the answer is negative, right? Has to be something negative. So we can start from there. And if you just keep going, don't quit after two seconds, you'll find out that the answer is negative seven. Seven to the third power is 343. Negative seven to the third power is negative 343. Okay, try C. Okay, five to the negative two, we can do this. Five to the negative two, that's by definition, the same thing as one over five to the positive two, right? So one over five to the positive two is the same thing as one over 25. Boom, there's your answer. Now, if you wanna look at it differently, you can imagine that this is a fraction over one, right? Remember the other way? Okay, then all you would do is you would go, okay, I'm moving this down there, and then my new fraction looks like this. Not five to the negative two down there, but five to the positive two. We have to have a one up top. So that's the same thing as this right here. Either one's fine. Okay, pause it and try D. Now D is the same deal. Okay, I'm gonna pretend like this is D here, all right? All you need to do is go, okay, I'm gonna shloop this right up to there. That turns into 5 to the positive 2. And again, don't mess with the 5. Just mess with the sign of the exponent. 5 squared is 25. That's it. Okay. Pause it and try E. All right. What you're doing, what they're actually asking is, what is the opposite of 14 to the 0 power? If you just do this to the 0 power, anything to the 0 power is 1. So that part is 1. So the opposite of 1 is negative 1. That's it. Go ahead and do F. Pause it and try F. Okay, let's try, I have X to the third times X to the negative two. Well, that's just X to the first, right? And then I have, uh, let's see here, X to the, no, excuse me, Y to the second times Y to the one, negative one, good gravy. That's just gonna be Y to the first. So there we go, okay, all right. That is it. Make sure you know the rules of those zero exponents and uh, try them today and see how many you can get right. And I'll see you all next time. Bye.